Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for clicking on that thumbnail to watch this video today that I've made for you guys. I know it's been a while since I put out a video. It's been a few weeks and uh, I can't tell you how much it means to me to be back on camera. And so we're getting back to business as usual on the channel. Uh, today's video is going to be a uh, review of a distribution that we're pretty well familiar with. But it got recently updated and a lot of work has been put into cleaning it up and making it look good. And so that's what we're going to look at today. So let's go ahead and roll that intro and then we'll get into the video. And we're back. So, well, today's distro is, yep, you guessed it, Storm OS. If you didn't guess it, then hey, it's Storm OS. If you guessed it, then Storm OS. <laughs> but either way, we're looking at Storm OS. Ben Jamin, who is a developer of Storm OS, has put a lot of work into it, uh, into cleaning it up. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to log right on in. And we're, oh. Aha, uh -huh. we logged in that time. Uh, that's a bug that he is aware of. So if you experience it, don't freak out. Um, sometimes you have to log, type in your password two times to log in. Uh, he's working on fixing it. Uh, and so just bear that in mind. Uh, as far as the clean look that you see right now, with just a gray wallpaper, I think it's fantastic. It's clean as all get out it looks good what i will mention is in the uh the, t the panel at the top when we take a look at it if you notice the icons over here which is your quick quick launch icons and your application launcher right here um they look kind of like a hot conjumbled mess as compared to this panel over here which is your system tray panel that has all your your connectivity and your package manager uh, icons and all that good stuff along with your power manager and that kind of stuff and your time and date and then also your uh, this nice little weather app uh, uh, that they've got going on up here it looks nice and evenly spaced and everything else as compared to that one so there might be a little attention possibly needed to be given to the left side of the panel but other than that it looks good uh, as far as your desktop icons, I personally am not a fan of them. Some people are, but they are what they are. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. If you look at home, this is going to actually take you to your home file directory in Thunar, which is what it's using, as you can see right here. Uh, typical file manager, got stuff to your left, got stuff to your right. You know, you click on it, this, that, and another. You can do control minus to decrease size control plus to increase size it's very nice also if you want to hit see your hidden files you do control plus h and all your dot files will start in dot folders will start to emerge those are all your hidden files which are your system files like all your config stuff is in here like comp is decomp gcomp auto start you know all that good stuff is right there pamax there pulse your session your thunar all those settings and which if you click on them has their configuration files which are the ones that you could use to actually edit stuff, you know? So either way, there's a look at that and what you can do with your Thunar. Now, if your Axel 8, C8, uh, it's if you want to download a link, you can do that right there. Click OK. Uh, menu X. Now, this is a bug that he's aware of that I found. And really what it is, it's it's better to show you what, what it's... It, it's an untrusted application. So therefore, it's as the security aspect of Linux, it's gonna it's not gonna let you use anything that is untrusted or that can do severe damage to your distribution by by uh actually without reminding you that you need either elevated privileges for it or you have to type in your pseudo password. So this is like saying that this is not a trusted program. Are you sure you want to do it? But it's low level enough that you don't need to actually put in your sudo password so or root password so what you got to do is you go to home 
Otherwise, you're gonna get this knack, every, this nag every time. And we're gonna hit Control H to hide the dot files because you don't need them. But you want to go in your desktop. Now, if you see in your desktop, you will see all these files here. Now, you do Menu Store Max, right? You go to Properties, go over here to Launcher, click this Allow this file to run as a desktop file, and set it as a file that's trusted. Hit Close. Now, when you click it. It doesn't give you that nag. And then, of course, you could use it to create a backup of your local bash RZ, a zip backup or whatever you want, as you can see what it asks you to do. And then, like, so for the play movie, it's going to say the same thing. So now you go here to play movie, you want to do the same thing, because all of these are probably not set to that. So you're going to hit close, and now when you click on it, it should open up without the nag. So that's what is simple. I'm willing to bet you if we click on this one and look at the properties, I'm going to show you that it was not set as well. And it is not. So we're going to hit that and close it. Now when I click on it, I should not get that nag. Nope. I go to my download link. And so I can copy my, my Git link from like GitHub or whatever right there, and it'll download it for me. So that is actually pretty cool. Uh, that's a little bug that he's got to fix. Uh, I think it's just a matter of when he creates his ISO image that he needs to ch mod uh minus x I think or plus x I think yeah it's plus x sorry plus x to those to give them the actual trusted uh values and make them you know trusted to the to the user or whatever uh so that when it copies over it does that uh but either way that's a look at those files right there and what they do uh under application launchers um the other thing that he cleaned up is the font on this is very very nice and clean and very legible and not smushed i like it it's it's beautiful uh under favorites it's got quite a few favorite apps the one of note is your terminal emulators there uh and your web browser uh is there which is going to be firefox as you can see up here in the button here uh, the launch thing recently used apps right here are ones that have been used um which i don't know other than other maybe task you know running services running in the background because i didn't just configure to display as you saw um desktop background i didn't do anything with that so uh for applications you have um of note really you have appearance how to remove software the Avahi, Axel 8, which is cool, bulk rename, uh, color profilers, Compiz configuration settings, which is nice that he uses Compiz, because with this you can enable all kinds of different effects like blurry windows or wobbly windows, water effects, all that good stuff. So, so that you can, um, uh, like right here is your wobbly windows effect. You can enable it, disable it. You can actually set the, the, the friction, the spring, you know, all those things right there. So... There's a look at, at comp is and what it does. Um, then uh, under accessories, uh, you have in grandpa discs, which is uh, basically it's like the gnome uh, disk manager uh, right here, which here are settings where you could edit things into it and kind of you, you can actually use the mount options and the uh, take ownership and those kind of things to help, you know, like if you're putting in a, another drive that was booted under somebody else's or like say you bought a used hard disk drive and it's got somebody else's thing, uh, you can take ownership of it and make it your own as well. You can write to it and that kind of stuff. So GNOME hard disk is a very useful little tool for development. Of course, you got icon browser graphics, you have GIMP uh, under internet, Firefox, Thunderbird, multimedia, you have the musical streaming app of my Uzi, uh, which is a pretty cool little app. Let's open it up. So you got, oh, why are you not opening up? Oh, there's another little bug that I found. Um, my Uzi does not open up. That's interesting. Uh, let's go back to multimedia. Uh, Pavu, which is a, your volume control and your mixer settings. Uh, you have your, um, VLC media player and of course you've got your camera utility for webcamming under office uh this is where i'm kind of 
when it comes to distributions, what he has in here is okay, I guess. I mean, sort of, he's put a word in here, which is Abbey word. And also he's got numeric, which is a calculation analysis. So if you open it up, it's kind of like a, like a spreadsheet. Well, will it even open? How come they're not opening? That's interesting. Oh, there it is. You have to, so anyhow, well, I wonder if I got to click on that then. Anyhow, so it's like spreadsheet, right? It's a standalone version of spreadsheet. I'm more of the an abby word if you look at it, it's like a like a document writer a word writer those are in my mind's eye those are okay to a degree because they're lightweight they're not a full office suite but what i tell most developers like i've told zero linux zlia linux astro linux uh, all these other different you know distributions and when i do the video reviews i always say the same thing it's better to have this subcategory in your menu, but leave it empty because nine times out of 10, well, actually I'm gonna go as far as 10 out of 10. You're not putting in the, the applications or the tool suite that they're actually, that, the, that your end user is gonna to wanna to use. They're gonna rip that out anyhow, and they're gonna put in their own. But it's just better to leave it blank. It adds less bloat to your distro. It adds the customization ability more for the user on their end to learn how to install it and to put what they need into it instead of a version of what you personally would like. You know, the dictionary is okay and the personal organizer, Osmo, is okay. I think that's a great little tool as well um, to use. Uh, but the rest of it, like your Word and your spreadsheet stuff, just, just let them put that in on their own. Uh, for other, of course, you've got the Menu X, the Playmate, the WGET, just basically what you got on your thing along with the... Uh, hp uh scanning software uh which is he doesn't have the hp software installed for the actual printing software uh which you can do uh it's historically known that hp supports linux that's the if you're buying a printer for linux and you're going to use a printer for linux it's better to buy an hp uh, under science he's got the numeric you know spreadsheet for settings of course this is going to be where you can find Anything settings related on your on, on this distribution, such as your clipboard manager setting, your cl profiles, comp is, default applications, appearance, Bluetooth adapters, firewall settings, all those things, Covantum settings, you know, for theming and stuff like that. And then under system, of course, is your system related tools. All of these are like your terminals, like your sensor viewers, your H top, which we do go ahead and open that. You'll see that we are, it's very lightweight. You're only using seven to 190 gigs which is uh very light which is par for the course for xfce it's known for being a light distribution and of course um it's hardly touching any of my processors uh which is pretty doggone cool so there's that now um and then of course that is it up here to your left here's where you can get to your settings real quick and then uh, uh, you can lock your desktop. And of course, this is your power session right here where you can actually log out and you can save this session for future sessions to log in. Should, be, should it be that you're going in between, say, you know, an i3 window manager session or a KDE session or XFCE session. So anyhow, that is a look at that. And then, then here down on the bottom, your doc, uh, your... Uh, you're, you're, you have your terminal, your Firefox, your VLC movie player. Uh, G part of which is interesting, he's got two kind of disk partitioners, which is um, disks and also uh, G parted, because you can use disk to partition a, a, a hard drive as well. But G parted, I guess, is one of the two tried and tested old school, older variants of a disk partitioner. I mean, you have some that are using terminals such as CF disk or F disk and C disk. Uh, so you got those two as well. I mean, there's many, many different disk partitioners, but G part is one that he's included in here and put on the dock. And then of course you got your add or remove software, which is gonna open up your PAMAC. Here you can click on updates to check for your updates. You can click here to browse, you click on this little hourglass and you type in like say OBS studio or OBS. And then here comes everything that's got OBS in it, icon theme, Dash, uh, open search dashboard, which is a plugin, uh, which is not OBS plugin, but it's got o OB in it. So, and then OBS Studio right here. So, there's all those things that you can use 
and download here. It's simple as clicking this downward arrow, clicking apply, and it's going to synchronize the database. And now it's refreshing. It's going to ask me to do this, but I'm going to hit cancel, upon which it will install. I hit cancel on that. And now we just hit cancel on this. And then we go back and we're back there. But that's how you install that. So there's a look at that. Oh, it's got the trash can icon over here, which is different that it's separated, but whatever. And that is the actual storm tool, the storm OS utilities program tool. Now, this is where you can fix different things like refresh mirror, do system updates, uh, AUR updates, arch key updater. Uh, if you run the key ring stuff, you can install team viewer, LSHW. Uh, you can install the i2dc code tools and uh, for decode at dims uh install free drivers uh and also proprietary drivers for those of you that are using uh nvidia uh, for the laptop section you can enable trackpad tap with to click um which will require a reboot as well you can enable power management hardware memory section you can do memory stuff you can do lshw stuff memory reader stuff you can blank your screens uh and then block detail info now these that are reserved are ones that he has not added to but there's those and that's just and under the logout you can hit logout which we don't want to do we we'll hit cancel you can switch uh system info by lshw we can get your system info uh which it crashed but whatever system resources via top which is where you can launch top you take a look and see what's going on uh under um update utility program add or remove software if you click that it's going to obviously launch your add or remove stuff for you know adding software and add utility tool to tray uh, which uh, if you click on that it's just going to put it in your tray but that is the actual utility tool that he's created there now that being said it's a lot of a lot of arch distributions tend to launch that tool on startup he's chosen not to i have no problem with that whatsoever in fact i think that is okay um a lot of people just close out of it and they hit don't start it start up at the bottom right hand side tick that little box and they always forget about it uh some of your new to linux users will actually want that and that's okay that he's got it on a click up there because a new to linux user is just going to stumble upon it click on it and find it anyhow so keeping it there is a much better option in my mind's eye uh but as far as the look and feel of it excellent xfc is always fun to play with uh he's done a great job of keeping it clean i mean the candy that people want they're going to add to it they're going to rice it themselves a new linux user linux user may choose a background for it uh under the desktop settings which Right, it's as easy as right clicking on the desktop, going to desktop settings, and then you can change your background. You know, you can just find a find a background to put in there and just change it. So I mean it, it that's a no-brainer. Other than that, Storm OS, go ahead, download it, test drive it, tell me what you guys think of the work that Ben's put in. He's come a long way since he's been working on it, and he's been doing a, a, it's a huge uh, labor of love for him. Uh other than that. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to like the video. Uh, do what it is that you like and you do. Uh, you know, as far as commenting in the sections that you do. Also, um, if you get a chance, join our Discord. Uh, also, you can go to buy me a coffee and give a small donation there. Or you could hit the super thanks button down below. Or you can actually join the channel. That helps as well. Either way, y'all keep doing what you do. Y'all keep on Linuxing, stay blessed, and have a great day. And I'll catch you in the very next one.